Hello everyone, welcome to this really really quick tutorial about how to stream your display output from Resolve to uh, any streaming provider basically. We're going to use OBS, we're going to use NDI and we're going to use um, Nope Display. These are the three things that we're going to use as well as Resolve obviously and now Resolve doesn't have NDI capabilities which is sad. If you don't know what, what NDI is you should definitely look it up. It's basically like virtual SDI cable that you can put down on your computer. So you can run video from one app to another on software. You don't need any like display connections for it, which is awesome. Just completely awesome. And then we're going to use OBS, which is the streaming software of choice. And you can find a bazillion tutorials on how to use that. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly show you how we can get NDI output from Resolve, which is awesome. Because some of you may know that you could even use the NDI output straight up in, uh, in Zoom or Google Meets or whatever you want um, as a webcam source. So your output from DaVinci becomes your webcam, which is incredibly useful. Like uh, you, you, know, you, you don't just want to show something to somebody really quickly, uh, like show an edit or see how it flows or um, stuff like that with music and sync stuff, you know, all that stuff that you just can't get with like sharing your desktop. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. I've got this timeline here with a bunch of shots. Uh, awesome band, by the way, Pool, you should look them up, they you know, make awesome music, so definitely worth checking out. And we're going to use a tool called Nope Display Connect. Now, this tool didn't, didn't used to have NDI output, but I talked to Thomas, the maker of Time and Pixels, and I was like, can we have NDI, please? And he said, yeah. And he just made it happen in like a matter of hours. It was ridiculous. Uh, I haven't purchased it yet, to be honest, uh, just because I haven't needed it this year. But I will totally do this um, uh, very, very soon. So what this does is basically you throw it in as an OFX and it gives you a separate viewer. Uh, we're just going to pin this to the stay on top. And as you can see, you get a you get a separate viewer that you can have in a floating window and just drag around. So you could put this on your second screen, but you know Resolve now has this sort of built in as a full screen preview. It does have some other stuff though, so you can put you know do like custom output blanking here, um, and do all kinds of other fun stuff. This is a great tool to have. Uh, you can change the background to gray if you want this. You can use the monitor ICC profile, which is awesome, which Resolve doesn't even support in, in Windows. And uh, all kinds of stuff here. You can really customize it, like throw on a separate LUT if you want to, and you know, it's cool. It's like, you know, you can load a 3D LUT. So this is an awesome tool to have, but what they just put in, or what Thomas just put in, is NDI. So you can go NDI and says NDI is enabled. So what we have, what we do have now, is a virtual SDI cable going through our computer, telling everyone like, "Hey, you know, you can use this as a source." So here, if we open uh, OBS, you get this little thing called NDI source. So you need to install some NDI tools and an NDI plugin for for um, for OBS. But I'm going to link everything down in the description. I'm not going to bother you with. Uh, showing you how to download stuff that you should be able to do that yourself. Uh, so you can do NDI source, you press OK, and then you click on the source name, and then it's going to show you your your sort of nope display NDI connect is the source, and we're going to press this, we're going to bend with highest, sure, whatever. This is, you know, this is the YUV range, that's your video data, data levels. And uh, latency mode, we're just going to go with normal. You can do lower latency and it's experimental, but it works pretty well for me. Um, and as you can see here, we now have our image from Resolve live into OBS, uh, which is awesome. So if we play this back, I need to Let's open OBS here. You can see that we can now take this and just start streaming to any service that we want, which is awesome. Or you could use the virtual webcam to use it as a webcam right there, or you can install NDI tools, and then you can use your... your um, uh, this straight up without OBS, just in your in Google Meets or whatever you want, uh, Zoom. They all, uh, most of them support uh, the NDI output, the virtual output, or, or virtual input. It's called yeah, virtual input. 
so you want to install NDI tools. Now this only works on like Mac and Windows systems, so Linux is a bit behind on all of that, and the tools don't work. But if you have you know a Windows or some Mac lying around, you can totally do this, and it's freaking awesome. So you can imagine the possibilities for it. Live review. Obviously, this isn't like color accurate. I mean, in the eye, it's supposedly pretty color accurate, but you know, for color accuracy, you need to look at the whole pipe of things. So, if somebody like you stream this to YouTube and somebody opens it in your web in their web browser, it will not match your grading monitor at all. And but that's a different topic. So, this works great, especially for for offline editing. So, if you would just want to show an edit in, in in full motion without rendering it, and then you know, sending it to people, and then whatever, use all of this. Uh, this this works. This is awesome. Use it. You can just minimize this and just work. Now, one thing to notice, I I put this OFX on a clip, which you sh really shouldn't do, because then you have it in your clip grade. So just get rid of it, and we'll put it, this on our timeline grade. Uh, I've already done this in here as well. And then uh, I think I might have killed it. Oh no, here it, here it goes. So yeah, it's it's obviously better when it's on the timeline to so go through the whole timeline. And there's even, you can even work in ACES or in color managed modes with this. There's a bit of a workaround that you have to do, like transferring it from ACES to 709 and then from then stream it and then from 709 to ACES back in your timeline. It's a bit funky, but it does work and you can work like this. And just really quickly, the tool is like $39 or something. It's not expensive and it really, really is awesome. Uh, so give it a shot the the developer of time and pixels is awesome you get awesome support this guy is like yeah it's just amazing it's great to see those like smaller people making great software now that you can really use in production um so yeah big shout outs big shout outs